Okay, so um, I'm a school teacher. I'm a teacher, right? So uh, I always think that I keep people awake, particularly after lunch, by instead of just talking at them, is by asking them questions and things as I go along. Okay, so um, so I'm I'm very happy to have discussions as we're going along rather than talk. Okay, I promise not to use blackboard or anything. Okay. Now, first of all, I have to fess up. Is um, I, agile is a very new thing. Uh, but it's something that uh, I've become aware of through my contact with game developers uh, who are starting to use this. And I do a lot of work with a company called Supermassive Games. And Supermassive uh, use Agile principles. Now, they've been helping me, uh, advise, advising me to set up a Digital Games BA program here at Falmouth. And I'm going to bore you with some of the details of that in a minute. Uh, but, but one of the things that I want to do, I'm still trying to figure out in my head, is how do you do agile uh, game development with students uh, who, um, who don't have the same motivations as you would get if you were in a, in a real business? Okay, so, uh, so they're very good, super massive, say, yeah, do it, do it, because this is what we want people to have experience of. But my, me with my school teacher hat on goes self organizing groups. What happens? You know, uh, how how do you how the hell am I going to cope with the outcome of that? Okay, so it seems to me that um, you know my being new to this, but but being a teacher might actually kind of provide some insights into what's going on. Because because I guess I'm skeptical about it working in the context of of, of, of student groups. I'm talking BAs, not master students. So you might who've got different investments. So let me first tell you about what we're doing here. So please stop me um, if you want to add anything. So this is me. Um, uh, I've got those things and I'm that. And I've, only, and I've only been here for about five weeks. But prior to this, uh, I ran a games development um, set of courses at Brunel University with a guy called Steve Jackson who set up um, a party. Fighting fantasy. Some of you are old enough to know fighting fantasy, eh? uh, and, and who who was at Lionhead. And we didn't use agile with students at all. Um, we we were very kind of old-fashioned school teachery. So I feel like I'm taking a plunge into 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 something that that's interesting but scary if we start to do this with students. Okay, so. Essentially, and, and I don't see any point in using Agile unless you've got a reason to do it. Um, this is this is what I'm about at the moment. This is the sort of the, the, the behind the vision thing. First of all, I'm interested in growing a, a game dev community in Cornwall because I think it's a great place to live, and you don't need to live in Guildford or Gloucester. Mm -hmm. or, okay. uh, I think it's incredibly well suited to Cornwall uh, because we've got super fast broadband here, and also because. The business of farms is very much arts and arts tech, so it worked really well, I think. Okay, um, uh, and also, uh, I think that what we need to do is to set, is to set up uh, support networks to help grow the games uh, community down here. So that might be things like, you know, um, um, about different practices, different techniques. Um, as, uh, so I'm currently setting up a research network around co-creation in games, because I think it's a really interesting Okay, so, uh, and through incubation, we want to grow a games industry from the ground up. So I'm going to put students in groups as if they were their own development companies with different multi-skilled groups working on probably, if it works, on agile principles in order for them to then be able to graduate and have products to sell and, 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 and be very kind of experienced in various working practices. These are my buzzwords, and some of you might recognise them. Can I ask um, why are you focusing on game development, not just development? Uh, because uh, we think that, that uh, a lot of students want to go into the games industry. The games industry has a huge demand for people with particular kinds of skills that they don't think they're getting through the current range of games courses that are around, which seem to, on the whole, <laughs> um, tag games on, but it's just a development. Uh, there's an awful lot of computer courses around there. So we, we felt that we really wanted to... That's not to say that people can't make apps and, and other things, or they can't use ludic structures in other forms of software. 
but but I think as far as our identity goes, game, game, games is, a, is is where we feel comfortable. So. Well, we're all looking to build this world-class games community. Okay, um, capitalism on strengths of the university, uh, uh, but most importantly, it's about um, employability for students. A lot of the students that graduated from Grinnell didn't get jobs in the games industry. Um, uh, some did, who were very talented people, or, but they usually came with some skills beforehand, like computing, etc., uh, or they were good artists. So I want to make sure that we that, that here what we're doing is is giving people the, the, the kind of robust kind of uh, skills that you need to get get out there in, in the industry. Uh, and also, I've got a huge investment in games being having a few, you know a healthy future and, and to innovate and not just games that are just replications of Mass Effect or World of Warcraft or Angry Birds. You know, I think I'm, I'm a, an evangelist of gay media in the sense that I think gay media is only just coming into its own. I think it can do amazing things. So I want to give people the equipment and the working practices to be able to explore the possibilities. <coughs> so uh, this is like my, my recipe, talk courses, research, innovation. <coughs> Uh, industry. Okay, so try, I'm trying to put these, all of these things together uh, in some kind of sens sensible, um, uh, uh, in some, some some kind of sensible way. And it seems to me that in some, perhaps in some respects, I've sort of intuitively come at things through an agile method myself in in, in putting things things together. But you all know that better than me because I haven't read all the theory around agile, which I suppose I'm very good. <laughs> or is it better to just do it? Uh, do it, but, but you're going to have to. I, mean, I, I teach Scrum. Yeah, you teach Scrum. Um, I teach um, project management for yeah. students. Yeah. Engage students, be assistants. Um, you can still have time to take lessons, but the structure of those lessons is self organised teams. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but you'll have to um, you'll have to know Scrum for our job and teach them the, the process. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that uh, that I I will have people on board <coughs> in, 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 a, in a few months' time who uh, who already use that process in their game development in, in their game development process. So so even though I haven't experienced it myself, I, I'm all going on board. It. So I, I have a question for you, is, okay, what happens in, in dysfunctional groups when they don't get things done? Do you adjudicate, how do you, how do you go and mend issues that are going on in dysfunctional groups? Um, <laughs> let, let me know if you find the answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, so what, but what's the general thinking about that? Because with students, you know what, some, I bet there's some student, ex-students in this room who maybe didn't go to class with, you know, <coughs> they often suggest you need a stronger dog, a stronger okay. output. Stronger the stronger output. the output at the end, yeah. it will be Okay. So you give them the incentive. It's, it's not paying £9,000 a year. And <laughs> well, I, I was going to say something about your vision. I would, I would, I would probably, or again, just my thoughts, is not, not create people, create graduates that can go into jobs. Yeah. It's create graduates that can create jobs for others, so uh, create businesses. Yeah, 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 no, I'm totally with you on that. Yeah. This is totally yeah. about self-employment. Yes, and I think yeah. if, and if, that's that, if that's part of it, you can have a very clear goal, we're going to create X, mm. and everyone kind of aligns to it, and I think that's the stronger the goal, people align with it, and if they yeah. don't align, they go off and do something else, and yeah. I think that's also a healthy opinion. But the problem is, is that when you're working in an educational institute, because they pay nine grand, right, to do this job, it's tough. <coughs> to say, right, go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. The thing about dysfunctional teams, I don't know if you can do this in your area, but um, we try and avoid it by having regular one-to-one -one sessions, uh, which is usually the manager, which in your case would be yourself probably, yeah. uh, with each individual person on a regular basis. And any kind of dysfunctions come out of that, and then you can possibly do a bit of mentoring. So, 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 oh, right. Hmm? Culture. Yeah, yeah, but with one-to-one. Observe what's happening, spot the, the, the failures or the yeah, okay. things that are 
gone wrong and I'm trying to... <laughs> my, heart, my heart goes, the difference is, even though we have this view that they will be making things that they can sell, even though they'll make complete games right from the means that they've got that incentive, I think, to some extent. But I still know that you get students who, who just can't be asked. <laughs> <laughs> you Intrinsic things that, that are part of it. And it, the, the one thing I've tried again with dysfunctional teams is it's around the motivation, um, but probably more intrinsic motivation. So it's the getting up at, every morning and saying, I want to do this because I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And it's tapping into that, whatever that looks like. So it could be a common vision and setting out a plan that everyone feels they're pulling in the same direction and can't wait to finish it. It could be self organizing, which means that people suddenly feel like they actually have a voice mm -hmm. and that what they say matters. Um, but it's, does it, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's loads of people that know more than I do in this room, but there's things around, you know, different management theories around that, about how, how you motivate people to, to, to be able to contribute in that way. Get them to pay daily. <laughs> 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 I want value every day. <laughs> 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 I think that's a great idea. I can't see them. I can't see them. Well, a she does not work on agile principles. <laughs> they, they would demand value every single day. Yeah. So the one to one still help to, to get the folks to plug in the want and you can see how you can uh, help to design that to so delivering regularly is also something that can really have a lot of value that I find with people who uh, are not performing on teams. Yeah. It's usually because they don't see any benefit from that. So delivering something regular, something tangible, yeah. people have pride that. Yeah. Well, and as game developers, we should know this because it's all about oh, progress, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they can't yeah. be asked. Yeah. It goes back to you, you know, 95 and the biographic thing, right? If they want to make it work, mm -hmm. then they're, they're, you know, it's that, that investment they'll spend to make sure they're here and, 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 mm -hmm. and it's also if they do regular demos, they're showing to their peer yeah. group yeah. What, what we can do and what we try to do. Mm -hmm. That you know, kind of, you, you don't always get to the end point, but you're, you, can, you can show it and have a crash yeah. and explain what we were trying to do. Yeah, yeah I'll I've got Chris every week. They come, they have to present. 
because I think that might help the quality of their mind. Either that they just won't turn up. <laughs> Why not make it so that there's some kind of open platform that's going to open it up to everybody at the that way they can get feedback from Okay, yeah. that's a really interesting idea. Yeah. We'll keep going. Yeah. yeah. Just listen to everyone. Yeah. No, because I've built in some mechanisms to get industry, industry, people from industry to come in and look at their stuff as they're going along, because I think that's quite motivating for students to think that, you know, some industry is coming in to look at what they're doing. And it stops being like school. Well, if they have um, some kind of release platform, then it's all. Yeah. It'll give them a focus that people are downloading things and to show you notes, they could have like some kind of viral head. That's true, but I think it, it has to be again it's playable then. Mm. Otherwise, and that and you have and you have to move quite a long way to get something that's playable. I mean, it might just be a sketch, but nonetheless. Mm. But then the agile way is getting something up and rather than moving things around, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, that's really helpful. Uh, it's just when, when they, how, how would you deal with their, their confidence in that though? Because you know, when, when kids come on, I'm oh, sorry, that sounds really controversial, but when they come on the course, they're used to play, they, they, they don't see games in their raw state. They see these polished, beautiful, sometimes slightly glitchy yeah, things. Not the games. <laughs> yeah, and not everyone's had experience with indie games. Um, there's, um, but <coughs> there's normally um, like games events going on, like there's um, there's some 24 hour like game. Yeah, yeah, well game jams, game, yeah, global, yeah. Group, there's the global game jam and things like that. So having like experience playing those kinds of games, yeah. saying some people can do this like well, they're not expecting me to, but. It shows you the answer the possible, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 That's a really good idea. Take a leaf from say English literature <coughs> and yeah. set them some games to play. You know, as if you've got to read these books, these classics. Yeah, 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 no, absolutely. <laughs> I was just going to, uh, I'm trying to think of a value exchange for businesses coming into work, and I'm maybe turning on its head and, and actually go ask ask the business community what problems they can't solve yeah. that, you know, students might okay, have. Okay, I have thought of this. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I went out to industry yeah, and said, we because our, our um, <coughs> we've got something called the alacrity scheme, which is, uh, which is, which is groups of people who go out into the industry and yeah. say, what's your problem, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll have a go at it. And, 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 we, and we work on our own around games. But every time I ask to get, uh, ask the bigger games companies about that, they say, yeah, but what about IP? Yeah, and so I was just, I was just about to say that, is mm. that if they do create any IP, they actually get paid for it. That's yeah. another incentive to, you know, because if, <laughs> if, if the problem is that it has enough value to their company, yeah. The company will pay for it, and so there's a circle there. Yeah, because they want their space, they want to keep them. Okay, they so yeah, to okay, but you'd have, to, yeah, you'd have to set up a structure where that is either shared ownership or the idea of you get the transfer across. Open source it all together. That's a nice idea. <laughs> I, I just don't think it will work a lot, a lot, a lot of the people who, you know, It might with some of the more radical ones, but not, but not with the kind of. The ones that most mostly. I mean, some, there are some big ones that have been done in the past that really it's not one of the game, probably like the platform that they put out there. A lot of people just kind of extend and build them. Yeah. So. And there are, there, there are, there are <coughs> pockets of that. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask what, what technologies are you talking about? Okay, well, we're, we're, we're still coming kind of think about it. So I've got my own map somewhere. Okay, so uh, what we. Um, People will come onto the course and they'll specialise in one of these areas. Um, uh, and then there'll be one person from each of these areas in the groups. Okay, so you've got some of your programming, you've got some. But, but we've decided that we're going to use stencil for kind of sketching. Does anyone know stencil? Uh, what's the name of the bit of software that came out of MIT for animation? That, uh, scratch. <coughs> it's like scratch. Um, but it's very quick um, to use. And then, then there will be building stuff in YouTube. We decided to go with Unity as, as opposed to Unreal because we think Unity is easier to get stuff done quicker. And that's important yeah. to get that turnover. Get the people really sort of thinking I can move to make something real quick. Oh, I'm running out of time. Can you also sell assets on the Unity market? Well, that would be, especially for these guys, the artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which would be really, really, really good for the um, so
so Gail mentioned some of the artists who don't get involved in that. But um, well, I, well, I sort of arranged this around what Falmouth's already got expertise in that they're not deploying in relation to games and then putting the kind of the, game, the, the people who, who make games in there so that they can kind of mobilise the skills that are already in the university but they don't really understand yet how important that is to games. So, so I don't know the platform, what, what, in terms of the actual programming, what, what's been, what, was it C++ Java or what, what kind of... Uh, well, we're, we're, we're thinking of programming people. Well, we, I'll tell you what, we're, we're still arguing about this, to be perfectly honest. See, I think, I, I thought simply C++, that's what we've got to go with. That's the but, but other people in the group are saying that, that they don't think that we, should, we should, that we should kind of do that. We should let people kind of explore and do stuff themselves. Um, and, and not be too kind of, you know, flavoursome in that in that regard. But I, I think it's one of those things that we're still we're still arguing about. It feels like a good choice for us to be able to answer it. Oh, yeah, totally. I think Unity is a beautiful game. And, and it just makes sense when you when you put something together in Unity. I mean, you can do stuff reasonably quickly. It's not, it's not, it's not there. Does that kind of do what Hearthstone does? Does that do all the sort of, you know, the, the deep programming that is extended on the potentially scripting on? Yeah. Because the difference between the programs that come on this course and that they would if they were going to a cycle comp side course is that basically they'll be manipulating the engines that are already there rather than build them in the first place. Because we don't have that expertise here. It's not a science university, even though I'd love computing and things and what's going on. But at the moment we don't have that. So, 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 so it sounds softer, but it will appeal to those people who really know they want to do stuff for games. And there's loads of people out there who do. And it and will be really doing what some of the comp side things purport to be doing, which is getting people to make a game. But I think I've run out of time. Does anybody get any questions? Yeah, um, I think you kind of half answered it, but I'm a bit confused by the programming one by being a BA. Um, I mean, if they're going to plan, they're trying to get the programmers into games programming, they'll probably be doing all the things you just said um, engines and, and some real hardcore kind of optimizations and low level yeah. programming and dealing with data structures and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's going to be missing. Now, yeah. <coughs> yes, yes, it will. But, but, but uh, we have plans to kind of. to to actually build a BSC, but 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 trying, but we yeah. first things first, uh, and uh, but but we're we're definitely working on on, on getting something a bit more hardcore than this. But at the moment we're an arts university, so you know you have you have to work within your context. And but but we're, but we but by stealth <laughs> we're we're going we're to build in some some more some more kind of traditional concepts. Okay. I just want to thank everybody for some really good feedback and I know you're expecting something probably a bit more kind of this is what we're doing but um, but, but you know I hope it just kind of gives another song to the